A few weeks ago, I went to the Longleat Safari Park. Now, hopefully you've either seen that video or the video is available on the channel so that you can go and take a look at it if you want. Um, I had a few issues when I was there and I've been saying for a little while, I've been saying it throughout these videos, I have been having focusing issues. I did some good stuff at Birdland. I did some bad stuff at Birdland. I got some good shots in Longleat, but I got some bad shots in Longleat as well. And I've been trying to figure that out. So uh, today, West Midlands Safari Park, I came here on a day when they said it would be really nice and, and it's not, it's just rained. So that's a good start for somewhere where you're locked in a car, uh, trying to take pictures through a, a window full with, with, with things, but that's past. Had a bit of lunch you know, as you do. Uh, so I'm gonna try and um, get that working. Okay, so the, here's the difference. Before, I've been using single point focus and not continuous focus either. So today, continuous focus, and I'm gonna try a couple of different things. First of all, group focusing, uh, which gives you a sort of four up display. Now I tried this with flamingos, uh, again, go back, watch that Birdland and Longleat video, you'll see what I'm, I'm talking about. Try this with the flamingos and it worked really well. The other thing I didn't know about was D9 and D21, where uh, it, and it's a focusing mode that I've seen some wildlife photographers use. So hopefully we're going to get some shots like that. Now, like I said, it's not the greatest day out there, so I'm not expecting the best photos ever. One of the great things about the West Midlands Safari Park is that if you come and buy a full ticket, you actually get to come back for free. You get a, a free trip around the, uh, the park. So uh, I might do that. I might use that later on. Um, right now, I'm going to head off. And yeah, this is largely going to be uh, a, a video with me in the car uh, again, talking about stuff. Uh, but there is some outside stuff that I'll try and get some video of this time, which I didn't manage to do during Longleat. Anyway, uh, I'm going to head off now and actually start to try and, and get some of those shots and see what I feel I'm doing the best with with uh, um, uh, with these other two focusing modes. Uh, might be a bit different. I might have to bring some of these back into Lightroom and actually do some Lightroom videos uh, that, that are kind of uh, showing you exactly what's going on with them, but uh, we'll, we'll save that for a bit later. Until now, here are some pictures of animals. I've just been through the ruminants, which kind of sounds wrong, but we've seen rhinos and uh, didn't get any video footage because the camera was playing up. Now, this comes, this is something that I actually wanted to talk about. I'm waiting in a queue at the moment so I can sort of chat away for a bit. Um, something I wanted to talk about, make sure you set your camera back to settings that you want to, to use because I had bracketed mode turned on from my last trip to the Brecon Beacons. Perfect for them, don't need it now but I left it on, I couldn't think why my camera kept jumping, even though I had it set on manual mode. Um, I Basically, I'm using auto ISO, so I've got the uh, shutter speed that I want, I've got the F number that I want, and then I'm just letting the ISO sort the rest of this stuff out. I couldn't think why it was changing the shutter speed, and it turns out that it's bracketing that was doing it. But uh, I, I've turned that off now, so hopefully I'll be able to get some I won't be so panicky about getting photos because I've got some completely pointless exposures there, but never mind. Here we go, we're about to move. Okay, so I've tried it on D9. Um, I think I'm getting some better results, actually. I'm still not sure the eyes are absolutely pin sharp, but definitely, it's, it's definitely better quality than I had before. Um, so I'm going to try this group thing uh, at some point. We're just about to enter the, the wild woods, which I think is the start of the car uh, carnivore section. So I'm probably not going to be able to do much in the way of updates because I'm going to be busy concentrating on taking pictures. Um, but th it's, it's positive for a start. The, the, the continuous focusing is good. I've got it on back button for focusing. So it's continuous until I take my finger off the button. So when I need it to be uh, single, it's single straight away. There's no messing about with that. The auto ISO I've got, I've set, um, I think I mentioned this before, I've set the 
speed that I want because I want to make sure that it's I'm not getting any blur on it. I've set the uh, aperture that I want to a relatively good. Uh, what am I on at the moment? I'm on f f9 at the moment, which I might want to push up to f10 or 11. Um, maybe not. It seems to be all right at the moment, so I don't think I'll go that that much higher. Anyway, uh, relatively positive so far beyond the mistake of keeping bracketing on earlier on, and uh, we'll see how the carnivores go, but I can see the gates going right now, so I'll have to stop recording. And this is where things started to go a bit downhill. Despite getting a few shots of the big cats, they weren't really in the right place. They were mostly lying down, you know, they were sunning themselves. And even the white lions, which were my favourite shots from my last trip here, which was must have been over 10 years ago, they were just nowhere to be seen. But I did get a few shots, not, not of the lions and things, but of zebras. Uh, and my first trip around the park actually wasn't a bad one. Believe it or not, I've been around all of the animals. Um, I've been around the safari park, not the safari park, but the, the kind of internal bit as well. I missed the sea lions because just as I was getting there, they were closing for that particular show, so I didn't get to see those. I didn't get to see the sort of the meerkats and, and that sort of thing, because I did an awful lot of those when I was doing uh, long leads, so I, I don't need a bunch of pictures of those at the moment. However, uh, I did get some penguins, and I've tried the penguins with two different focusing modes, with the group mode and with the D9 mode. Now, I've been using D9 all day, and it's done me pretty well, I think. But what I'm going to try now is going around uh, the safari park again. I get one more chance before I uh, need to head home. And um, I'm going to try using the group mode and see if it works, see if that's working for me. Because I still think with the penguin shots I've got, and like, again, I've only just seen them in the viewfinder, I do think that the ones I took using, um, using D9 are just slightly sharper in the right place. The other thing I'm trying at the moment as well is shifting the, uh, the focal points around so that I'm framing my shot using the focal point um, to actually focus on the right thing in the image, which I haven't been doing before. Uh, but with something like continuous on, you really need to do that. Otherwise, it's just going to focus in completely the wrong place. Anyway, I'm going to go around again and let's see how I do. My second trip around the park was much more productive when it came to the big cats. It seemed that many of them had woken up. They were a lot more alert, facing the cars and clearly thinking about lunch. And as I pulled into the white lion enclosure, I was able to capture the images that I'd wanted to get all day. Well, that was very interesting. I've been around again. The idea was to keep everything on group uh, so that I could test out the two. What I ended up doing, because I was uh, sort of pixel peeping they call it on on the the uh the viewfinder just to see you know what what a difference it was making what i ended up doing is actually putting it back onto d9 so that i could get some shots and i got some shots which hopefully are going to translate into into lightroom into being that i've got i've got uh white lions i've got a uh, white tiger um the white tiger's first time round I, I just missed. I kind of nearly got one and I might be able to do something with it. This time I've kind of nearly got one that I think is a lot better than the ones that I kind of nearly got before. Uh, there were a few issues with it. I, they were in the perfect place and you know how these things are. There, were a, there was a queue of cars. By the time I got to the point where I could have taken the photo, it was too late. They'd moved on. But these things happen and you kind of have to deal with it and just uh, get what you can when you can, which is... Uh, that's sort of the point of doing uh, the, the the safari trips in the first place, really. Anyway, um, if what I'm thinking is right, I'm going to be using D9 from now on, especially for stuff like safari parks, for for uh, animals, for move movement, that sort of thing, uh, because I think I've got a much better hit rate with that than I have had with any of the other focusing modes that I've tried so far. And that's interesting because some people really like that group focusing. They absolutely swear by it. And other people really like that, that D9. Now, what happens with D9, as far as I understand it, is that you get a single pixel in the middle, a single 
focus point in the middle. And then it will use the nine points around the outside of that focus point in order to um, make sure that what's in that focus point is really what you're, you're doing. It, it means that you're more likely to get something in focus using that system. That's the idea anyway. And I think that's what happened, which is, again, you know, for me, somebody who's, who's just starting out on this and wanted to get the best pictures that I can, that was very, um, that was very interesting. So, uh, good day. It's just coming on to rain. So I've made it around the park in, in the right amount of time. I think I've got some good shots. Definitely uh, enough shots to, uh, to play with and definitely some... Ah, oh, there, there was one moment, and again, I don't know if I've got this in focus because it was such a long way off. So it's either may not be in focus or might be far too small to do anything with. Um, but there was a rock uh, with a, a lion in it, in the lion enclosure. And I think that the idea was that the lions would go and sit on that rock from various different points in the time. Of course, been rained twice and absolutely nothing. Well, whilst I was there, and unfortunately I'd just gone past it, so I wasn't in the best position. I had to, to look at this back window and focus through that back window. So it may not come out at all, or there might be this column in the, in the way or something like that. I don't know, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, but if I've got it, it's, the, the carved lion face on one side and then sitting a, uh, on the top, pointing the other way, is a lioness. That might be a good shot. We'll see how it goes. Um, for now, I'm going to head back and see uh, and get these into Lightroom and see how it all goes. Um, very excited to be, be doing more stuff with animals. Because I quite like photographing animals. They're, they're quite interesting, you know? And the edits aren't too difficult either. Because with a building, you know, you put a lot more into it. You, you bring out a lot more. Or with, with, with nature, you try and bring out more of the, um, uh, the, the, the things than you need to. With portraiture, you do the same thing. You know, you, you'll smooth out skin or you'll highlight eyes. With nature, uh, wildlife photography, really, uh, you know, you need to get as much as you can in the camera because the thing that's in the camera is the thing that people uh, actually want to see. And I know I've said in the past, and I'll probably say it again at some point, um, I, I'm not somebody who worries about photo manipulation at all. There are a bunch of people out there who actually have a real problem with photo manipulation. Who, you know, if you've added a, a, an aeroplane, this is a, a famous example of, of somebody who actually did uh, add an aeroplane into their uh, picture and it got panned for it. If you add an aeroplane into a shot, I don't mind. It's, the important thing is the shot. Is the shot what you want? Is the image what saying what you want to say? Is the art of the image something which is going to to uh, uh, get people on board with what you're doing? Which is always uh, part of the problem. And there is this idea in some quarters that anything to do with that, anything to do with Photoshop is a bad thing. And that anything that you've not got in the camera uh, is worthless, is, isn't, isn't right. It's not at all. It really isn't. And I know where this comes from because I've had uh, this before myself. It, the idea that you can create something and you do get all of those things right in the camera and yet it will fail against an image that has been heavily manipulated on Photoshop. That's an incredibly galling thing because the amount of work that you've put into that image to begin with, you know, it, it should be taken into consideration. Um, so I understand why it's, it's there and I do sympathize, but then at the end of the day, your work is your work. Your art is your art. And if your art needs you to put a lot of work in on Photoshop at some point, bring in mountains that aren't there, add, I don't know, mystical pools of light or whatever it is you need to do to get the image that you, you think is going to tell the story that you want, do it. Don't hold back because somebody's saying, ah, yeah, but you didn't capture it in the camera. It doesn't matter. Because your audience, the people who are going to buy those prints, perhaps, the people who are interested in the work that you do, they don't always care how you arrived at the image. They care what the image is, what the image says to them, and whether or not they want to hang that image on their wall somewhere.
Well, that was the end of my trip to the West Midlands Safari Park, and I ended up with this panel of three images with the white lines on, which I am very, very pleased with. My favourite of the lot has to be this first picture of a lioness, and I was able to bring out the warm summer shades of the sun setting, which just added a little bit more uh, story to this image. It was a brilliant trip, and I'm finally comfortable with the new camera and the lens, and I'm getting the results that I wanted. I hope you've enjoyed this trip, and as always, a comment and a like on this video would be ever so well received. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.